Hey plant fans, it's no secret these days that leaves play just as important a part as flowers do in making a garden work. Flowers come and go quite quickly so there's no point in planning your whole scheme around the flowers really. They're a nice to have but what you must, like a must have, is consideration of the foliage. You've got to get the leaves to work because they can work for the whole year round. So how do we make sure that our foliage choices work together? There are a number of different factors at play, such as colour, texture, maturity, variegation, but today we're going to focus on one thing, which is shape. So the golden rule is don't make plants with the same leaf shape next door neighbours. There are many different leaf shapes, as you probably have noticed. To give an example of a few different types, there is a very circular type, like a round one, like this eucalyptus gunai, for example. There's also the feathery, the feathery leaf type, like this Sambucus, and also say bamboo would be that. There's many like that, actually. Uh, palmate, palmate is another one where the leaf shape is mirroring like a palm. <laughs> so uh, that's a nice one. And these usually come quite big, not necessarily, but they often do. And these are great ones, I think. Then we've got your good old spikies. This is an acanthus spinosus but there would also be like, for example, cardoon. Then you've got like a heart shape is a very common shape, leaf shape. Epimedium is a really good heart shaped leaf. Ivy is heart shaped leaf. Reed shaped leaf is a, is a really good one. Like, so it would be like maybe your crocosmia or your agapanthus or so on. Um, this is a Libertia gold leaf, which I love, but you can see it's just that long, like reed style. Little, again, a little bit spiky, but a lot different to you the other spiky style we saw. Trumpet is also another one, like for example, like a hosta where the leaves kind of fold in on each other and open up like a trumpet style. And then you've got just like the classic leaf really, which would be like, for example, if a child drew a leaf, they'd probably just draw it like, you know, like a classic leaf style that is seen all over the place, like, you know, like rose or loads of different plants have that leaf as well. You can also Put that in it's quite hard not to put that in sometimes because it's the classic leaf shape to really understand the point actually it helps to look at combinations that don't work for example here we've got two reed style leaves juxtapositioned it sort of works with the color but actually the leaves are just too similar here we've got two completely different plants we've got aquilegia vulgaris black barlow on the left and then philictrum ann on the right but you can't tell the difference they are two completely different plants but they're just blending in so that they're indistinct remember if you're enjoying then you can like this video and more people will get the chance to see it. So then I will give you just a few examples of combinations that do work. We've got feathery next to palmate and they look very distinct and also very effective. We've got a nice combination here of a feathery fern frond alongside triangular oxalis. Very different, so it works, you know, it's interesting, it's engaging. If you take a photograph and then turn it to black and white, you can soon see whether the leaf shape is, is working or not. And if you're too reliant on flower colour, this will soon show up. If you've enjoyed this video and would like some helpful hints on how to design a jungle garden, then you can watch this video here. So when you're getting busy planning, just remember the golden rule. Don't put the plants together if they've got the same leaf type. This is Sonia from Plant Your Pitch Up. Peace out.